uh, great to be here today, and I hope you've had a, a wonderful day so far. My name is Chantelle, and I'm going to be talking to you about roles in tech and finding your fit. So, the agenda for today, we're going to have a quick intro and why I'm talking to you about this, and then uh, go over the roles in tech. We're going to go over six in total, quite a whistle-stop tour because we don't have too much time. And then I'm going to go into a few things to consider when finding your fit, finding the role that's right for you, and then a couple of takeaways at the end. So a little bit about me. Uh, I am a full-stack software developer at Memrise. As Pavla said, I started there about five months ago. Um, I'm also volunteering as the technology director at Girls in Tech London. I've also done a couple of internships, one as a business analyst and one as a security analyst. I've done a grad scheme where I rotated around the roles of uh, developer and systems analyst. And I graduated from that grad scheme as a full-time developer and following that moved on to Memrise. So a little bit about Girls in Tech. Girls in Tech is a global non-for-profit organization. We were founded over 10 years ago in the US by Adriana Gascoigne. We have over 65 chapters worldwide and we're focused on empowering, engaging and educating women who are interested in technology, much like yourselves. This picture here on the left is uh, from one of our recent events. We've been running a series called Getting Into Tech, The Tech Spectrum. We're really trying to highlight that there's not just one role in tech and not one right career path. And so we've been running this series to try and help women kickstart their careers into technology. And the talk I'm going to give you today draws on some of the experience and um, learnings from that series. I also work at Memrise, as I said, and we are helping to um, unlock users' superpowers, um, learning uh, language superpowers. We have just surpassed 35 million users, and we're across three platforms. So we have a website, we have an Android and iOS apps. And I, re I really like this image from one of our recent blogs on gender diversity. So the aim of this talk is to give you a bit more of an appreciation for different roles in tech and how they fit together, and to spread knowledge and passion for technology. So what do we mean by in tech? Well, Tech Nation describes a tech company as a business which provides a, de a digital technical service, product, platform, uh, or hardware, or heavily relies on it as its primary revenue source. Tech companies, though, only describe some part of the wider tech ecosystem. And I think we also have to acknowledge that there are roles in tech under the CTO of non-tech companies, which is also an option. So now it's time for the roles in tech. So as I said, this comes off the back of the series we've been running in London, but also my own personal experience, which is somewhat swayed towards a B2C product company. So I'm going to take you through six roles in tech, which I think are quite vital for delivering a tech product. Uh, also, just to point out, the, the link to the slides is down here if you want to follow along. So we're going to go over product manager, data scientist, product designer, software developer, QA engineer, and DevOps engineer. So starting with product manager, can I have by show of hands who here in the audience is already a product manager. Okay, take a good look around if you're interested in, in these roles. I'm going to ask for a show of hands for each of them. Uh, so have a look to see if there's anyone you're sitting near that, that fits in one of these roles already. Awesome, so product manager. I'm going to first go over the responsibilities and then a couple of uh, tips for uh, experience and preparation. So product managers are really uh, involved with defining the strategy and roadmap of the project. They oversee the project, uh, product features, feature development from conception all the way through to when you're monitoring how well that feature has helped in your project. They also leverage data and user research to help inform those product decisions. So if you're interested in getting into that role, how can you prepare? Well, one way is to start trying to understand different market strategies for different types of products. So how do you understand a product's competitive placement in the market? And how do you monetize that product? 
Secondly, uh, uh, there's a really great author, Gail Lackman McDowell, who I would recommend. Uh, I've read the sister book to this, um, Cracking the Coding Interview, uh, but I've heard that Cracking the PM Interview is very good for getting into product manager roles. And then lastly on here, I've got research products that you frequently use. If you're interested in them, you're likely to be able to go through and uh, really pick out the details. You can have a look at release notes for that product, and this will help you see how the product manager uh, made their decisions through time, what they prioritized. And then also, there are some companies like Bulb, which is an energy company in London, who have their roadmaps, uh, some of their roadmaps public, so you can have a look at their public Trello boards. So next stop, data scientist. Who here is a data scientist by show of hands? Awesome, cool. So, Data scientists' responsibilities are to design and execute experiments to inform decisions and communicate the outcomes of those experiments back to the business. You're also going to be identifying and analyzing data sets and data sources, and this might be internal or external. And you're going to be troubleshooting any data discrepancies. What experience and preparation can you get for this role? So, a good understanding of statistics and key metrics. You can also um, start by learning some code. So SQL, and uh, quite hot in the industry at the moment, is Python Jupyter Notebooks, which is essentially a workbook where you can visualize the steps as you go through. And then lastly on here, uh, from asking around, Kaggle.com is really good for data science products uh, projects if you want to get your hands dirty and try some things out. And Data Skeptics Podcast is good for talking over the concepts of data science. So next is product designer. Who here is a product designer? Ooh, few people. Okay, cool. So for this one, the responsibilities of a product designer are to prototype and demonstrate the interaction and communicate the design that they've come up with. So the product manager themselves are going to be involved in the conceptualization of the idea, um, and they're going to start involving the designer so that they can make it more of a reality. And they can go through an iterative process. It's so much cheaper to make mistakes in the design phase than it is later down the line once you've already built the full feature out and you've tried it with your full audience. You don't really want to do that, so you want to then iterate based on user research feedback. In terms of experience and preparation for this role, you can try prototyping tools like Framer and design tools like Sketch. So there's a difference in fidelity of some of these prototyping tools. You can start with low fidelity prototyping tools like Keynote, for example, um, and you can go all the way up where you need more coding skills, but you get uh, more of a realistic uh, experience and a high fidelity tool is Framer. You can also prepare by creating yourself a design portfolio um, and try and go through some case studies in this portfolio. So sweet, okay, so the next one is software developer. So key responsibilities of a software developer. Who here is a software developer? Oh, a few more hands. Cool, OK. Um, so design, build, and maintain systems and services. You're going to be applying software development principles and paradigms to new problems and breaking down features into deliverable tech tasks. So the feature that the product manager has been asking for, you need to work out how you're actually going to technically deliver that, and if it's feasible. And then you're also going to have to troubleshoot issues. So you're going to get a lot of uh, error messages and some analysis to do going through putting on your detective hat to work out what's wrong and then fix it. So in terms of experience and preparation for this role, uh, you can prepare by reading the Cracking the Coding interview again by Gail. Uh, she goes through a lot of algorithms and data structures. You can also um, go to coding boot camps, or I've, I've known people come through to software development who have not done computer science degrees, for example, coding boot camps they've done instead, or science degrees, physics, for example. Uh, and then lastly, again, get your hands dirty and try, uh, create yourself a GitHub repo, find some projects that you're interested in, and get practicing. Okay, the next one is QA engineer. So this is really the gatekeeper role. You're going to be reviewing specifications and technical design documents to provide feedback. You need to think, well, the software developer is going to deliver this. How am I going to test it? You're going to need to create and execute test plans and test cases. And you're going to need to estimate, prioritize, plan, and coordinate testing activities. 
in terms of experience and preparation for this role, you're going to need to understand different types of testing. Um, so this can range through from manual testing, where you have to have a really good eye for detail, uh, all the way through to um, unit testing, which will be on specific small chunks of code. And you want to also have a good understanding of what your user's performance expectations are and some uh, security pointers. Lastly here I've got um, the basis would be SQL and scripting as the basic level of coding for this role, uh, but you also might want to have a look at some frameworks used for testing. Okay, so DevOps engineer, this is the last one. Uh, who here is a DevOps engineer? Yeah, that's kind of in line with the statistics that I've read. Um, so DevOps engineer, their main responsibilities are to automate deployments. You basically want to get your code from the developer's machine through to the general public in with as little cost as possible and as quick as possible. Quick as possible. Your uh, cost to market needs to be very low. DevOps engineer is an infrastructure-based role where you're going to be trying to automate this pipeline of continuous integration and continuous deployment. You're also going to be evaluating and integrating other solutions. You need to be able to monitor how well your application is doing, uh, whether it's got any downtime, um, and you need to be alerted if there are any issues. So DevOps engineer, you're responsible for configuring all of those things. In terms of experience and preparation for a DevOps role, now this one's a bit harder to get into straight out of uh, uni or straight out of a uh, few years' experience. But what you can do is uh, learn courses on continuous, uh, continuous integration, continuous deployment, source control, and containerization, for example, Docker. You can try your own projects, uh, run some servers. Cloud projects is a good idea as well. Um, most of the main cloud providers, for example, AWS or Google Cloud, um, they, will, they can give you uh, some credits for free and you can try some things out. I know uh, that Microsoft Azure definitely does that. And then lastly here, I've got support open source projects. So this might be integrating containerization into a proje project that's already up and running. Cool. So in terms of finding your fit, so that was a very quick whistle-stop tour through six different roles. Uh, there are so many out there that you can start researching and having a look for. Uh, the people that put their hands up beforehand, they would be good people to start networking with um, if you're interested in one of those roles. But how do you evaluate whether or not a role is right for you? Well, this is something I had to do fairly recently. Switching positions, I took a little bit of time in between uh, to work out what really mattered to me and what was important. So I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about how I decided on my next role, uh, what things I considered, and what you might want to consider too. I'd also like to point out that even if you're in a role right now and you're not considering moving, this is a, a decision you're making by staying at a company as well. Cool, so I've broken this into two parts. We've got finding your company and finding your role. So finding your company, it's important to um, evaluate whether or not you uh, agree with the industry or uh, support and interact with the industry. It's also important to think about company size. Now, this can play a big part uh, in the role as well. So typically, smaller companies are more, uh, they have more generalized roles and less specialized roles. Smaller companies as well might have a bit more chaos depending on where you go, and larger companies are typically uh, likely to have a lot more process in place. Uh, the next one down the line here is culture. Now, culture is quite a hard one to evaluate from the outside, but what I would suggest is reading uh, blogs that are put out there by the company, reading Glassdoor reviews, uh, and you can ask certain questions in an interview to try and gauge what the culture is like. Next, I have career progression. So for this, I think it's useful to go through uh, things like LinkedIn and have a look at the different roles that that company has and what career paths people have taken so far to get into those roles. I think you'll be surprised how varied they can be. And lastly on here, I've got vision. So if you can understand about a bit about the company's vision beforehand, this is something that you're going to be working for this company five days a week, uh, long hours if, if necessary, and you really want to get behind the vision. You really want to put a lot of effort into what you're building and, and be happy about the impact that you're having. So if you can get behind the company vision, I think this is very important. And then in terms of finding your role, 
So position type can play a uh, part. You can either be permanent or contractor. If you're permanent in the role, you are likely to have a slightly lower salary than a contractor, but you have more job security, and you also have the company perks, which you wouldn't necessarily get as a contractor. But if you're a contractor, it's often easier to chop and change between roles quite quickly. So if you enjoy keeping on your toes and moving between things, then a contractor is a good way to go. Next, I have responsibility level. So you can have responsibility over a system or a project, uh, sorry, or a product, or you can have responsibility over people. So it's a good idea to think which path you would like to go down. The next one here I've got is completion. So do you mind starting a project, starting lots of projects? Is that what excites you? Or what excites you is completing them and delivering them and getting them over the line? And lastly, specialization. So as I said before, if the company is a bit bigger, it's likely to have more specialized roles. Um, and if you want to dig deep, then maybe this is the way to go. But if you prefer to be a bit more general, then uh, perhaps company size doesn't matter as much. So here's a book recommendation. Um, a little while ago, I read this book, Doing Good Better, uh, by William McCaskill, and it's around effective altruism. So how can you um, do as much positive, have as much positive impact with your uh, skills and your resources as possible? And how do you make this effective? Um, so an example of this would be as a software developer, you can choose to donate a certain portion of your salary to charity um, and you're having a po positive impact on people or you could stop what you were doing and go and volunteer your time. And it talks about these decisions and uh, working out what is uh, going to have a better impact, a bigger impact. So this has three questions. Um, I've linked down here, you can't see, but if you go to bit.ly roles in tech, um, then you can get the link for chapter nine, which is available. And it has three main questions in it. How do I personally fit with this job? What is my impact while working at this job? And how does this job com contribute to my future impact? So what do I want you to take away from this? Um, shadowing. I think this is super important. Often people don't mind donating a little bit of their time to let you watch them work and ask questions about the challenges and the rewards and what they enjoy and what excites them about the role. You can, uh, if you can't watch somebody do this, then you can grab coffee with them um, and interview them. Secondly is networking, and I think this one is... Uh, Probably very obvious, but super important. Um, so the people that put their hands up, network with them, ask them questions, see if you can understand what they enjoy from their role, etc. And research the key conferences and meetups in that area. Go and meet people and find out again if that's, that's going to be a good fit for you. So just as a recap, I hope you now have an appreciation for the different roles that we went over and how they fit together. Uh, I hope you go and explore your motivations and work out what's important for you and reach out and find some role models. So just to um, highlight, uh, I work for Memrise and we have quite a few jobs going in some of these areas. So come and chat to me if you're interested in finding out more. Um, and that's it. Thank you very much. So that was Chantal, and I think it's very important to think about picking your next job um, such in such a precise way. Um, and now, as always, we have um, some space for you to ask Chantal. Uh, so yeah, we have again this um, lovely fun thing. Hi, uh, thank you. Sorry, uh, I want to ask you, when you said that you took some time to think it over, uh, did you actually uh, resign from your previous job and traveled, or how did it work? Uh, yeah, very good question. Um, I did resign from my previous job. I had a three-month notice period, and I still took some time after that to uh, really think about what I wanted to do. 
I was very fortunate that I had got myself in a position where I was able to support myself financially to do this. Um, but it is something that I would recommend if you're also in a position to do it because you're going to be in this career for such, such a long time. You're, you're going to be working through different jobs and it takes up such a large proportion of your time that it's just such an important decision to make. So I really don't regret it and I, I did take time off to do that. You're welcome. Okay, next up. So I, I can't really see well. Uh, okay. Uh, I want to ask you as well, so when did you, like, di you decided to be a software developer in Memrise? So was it like you decided to be a software developer and then there were like 10 companies that you considered or what was the, or you actually wanted to work for the company and you were deciding on the role? Like, what was the process? That, that's a really good question. Uh, so for me, because I've tried a few different roles in internships and uh, through the grad scheme, I uh, knew that I wanted to do another software development role afterwards. And I'm quite a generalist, so I wanted to do something that's full stack. And, and by full stack, it means um, you're working out how to model the data and serve the data up. And then you're also building the front end website as well. Um, so it's quite a generalist role. And I had made that decision first, uh, but I went through uh, which applications and things I actually used um, and was an end user for and Memrise was one of them and I uh, made the decision to start applying to Memrise after knowing that I wanted to do a software developer role. Thank you. Okay, still we have time for one more. Okay, uh, so big applause for, for Chantel.